Hi, we're team 10337 Dark Matter, and this is us. We are a 7th and 8th grade team for Mandeville Junior High. This is our robot, Johnny Nine. His name was inspired by Johnny Five from the movie Short Circuit. The Nine was carried over from all our previous robot names. For this year's FTC challenge, we came up with an overall game strategy, which includes scoring extra glyphs during Autonomous, completing a full cipher during Teleop, and then scoring two relics and parking during Endgame. We brainstormed several different robot designs before deciding Johnny Nine was what we needed to achieve our goals. A major part of achieving our goal is the drivetrain, which James will talk about now. For this year's challenge, we custom designed a drivetrain and auto desk before construction. We designed a six wheel drop center drivetrain, which is chain linked and powered by four motors. So all six wheels get power. This helps us with speed and maneuverability and braking. In our CAD design, motor calculations and later field testing, we found an overall gear ratio of 28.8 to one was optimal for this year's game. We also incorporated actibotic hole patterns on our drivetrain chassis that allow us to easily mount parts and relocate them if necessary. Now that the robot can move, we began designing our glyph intake system, which Sydney will talk about. We had to address several issues when designing our glyph intake and lift system. First, we had to come up with a system that efficiently gathered and secured two glyphs. Then we had to figure out how to orientate glyphs by color in order to score the cipher. Our in-game strategy was to place one or two relics, and in order to achieve that goal, we would need to complete a cipher as quickly as possible. This led to the current active intake system, which consists of two inch compliant wheels driven by Never S 20 to 1 motors. You'll notice the intake wheels are different colors. The red wheel, which is wrapped in gaffer's tape, has less friction than the green one. The different friction coefficients assist in squaring the glyphs by forcing them to rotate into position. To further assist in squaring a glyph, the intake wheels can pivot which allow our driver to gather glyphs at different orientations. Once a glyph is secured, Two distance sensors located at the back of our intake system stop the intake wheels from spinning to prevent glyph damage during a match. The two distance sensors are also used to detect if a glyph is squared against the black plate. If a glyph is not squared, the wheels will oscillate as you can see in this slow motion video. Once we had the glyph intake system finalized, we began prototyping the glyph lift system, which Logan will now talk about. Once we were able to intake, we designed a way to secure two glyphs. We wanted the ability to hold on to two glyphs and be able to orient both by color in order to score the cipher. We went through several designs before deciding on a double rack and pinion system that grabs two glyphs independently. You can see the final pickup process in the video. The rack and pinion grippers gave the robot the ability to quickly grab two glyphs and tightly hold onto them. However, in earlier builds, the gripper servos were being overstressed and would strip gears. To resolve this issue, we needed a compressible padding between the gripper plates and the glyphs to take stress off the servos. We tested different materials and finally decided on a polyurethane foam. The foam both reduced stress on the servos and was able to hold on to the glyphs. To ensure we were not stalling the gripper servos, we used a current meter when setting servo limits. We also used the current meter when testing on our relic mechanism. Our relic mechanism was constructed of rev linear slides and can extend 35 inches. It has a pivot arm that can reach out an additional 14 inches. At the end of the pivot arm is a 3D printed claw that was designed to form fit around the top of the relic. We found that as the rev linear slide extends, they tend to sag due to their own weight and also the weight of the relic when it is in our possession. To account for the sagging, we have pivot positions set for grabbing pl and placing the relic based on how far the linear slide is extended. This allows for a precise, quick pickup and placement of the relic. Drivers typically don't have to waste time with the fine adjustments in order to grab or place the relic. A Rev Robotic Smart Servo is used with a pivot servo, which has a 188 ounce inch torque. Due to the length and weight of our pivot arm, we were close to exceeding the torque capabilities of the smart servo. To resolve this issue, we utilized surgical tubing to counterbalance the pivot arm. We also added a kickstand, which allows for the pivot arm to stay in a rest position after grabbing the relic. Also, since our relic arm grabs from the back of the robot, the driver has the option to reverse the drivetrain for easier maneuvering on the field during end game. That sums up the mechanism we used during Telia. Now the corner will talk about the jewel mechanism. Our jewel mechanism is operated using two servos. One servo lowers the arm between two jewels and the other rotates the arm to knock the correct jewel. To determine the jewel color, we use a rev color sensor at the end of the mechanism. During deployment, the jewel arm extends using the aid of surgical tubing. This mechanism is used in autonomous, which Matthew will talk about. 
This is a video of our 115 point autonomous in which the pivoting jewel mechanism is used to knock the correct color jewel. Johnny 9 uses motor and coder counts to drive specified distances and uses the gyro to maintain its heading as well as for turning. The robot uses Euphoria Vision software to read the pictograph and place the first preloaded glyph into the designated crypto box column. The robot then collects and scores up to two additional glyphs using rev distance sensors to square the glyphs in the intake. The sensors are also used to detect and record the color of each glyph that was picked up. The robot is programmed to then place the extra glyphs in the correct crypto box column in order to preserve the cipher. A majority of the parts used in our robot were designed in Autodesk Inventor and Fusion 360 and printed using a MakerBot Replicator 2 and a Folger Tech 5 printer, which a team member built over the summer. These devices allowed us to quickly manufacture custom parts throughout the season. For instance, the wheel bumpers that prevent the robot from flipping over, which we call doing a Majid. Throughout this FTC season, we continue to look at design improvements. Another thing we strive to continue is to improve our outreach program which Olivia will be talking about next. We love to showcase our robot and its autonomous along with spreading the word about FIRST and STEM throughout our outreach program. Some of these events include attending the Festival de Robotique at the State Capitol, volunteering as counselors at FRC Team 2992 Summer Camp, and also demonstrating our previous year's robot, presenting in several sessions at the FTC Relic Recovery Game Reveal, assisting a Madisonville F FLL team with their tryout process, hosting a scrimmage so other FTC teams could practice with the new game elements and rules, showcasing at the Core Element STEM Fest at the Saints Training Facility, and speaking on a local radio station to promote FIRST and upcoming FTC events. Both our adult and student mentors volunteer at many FIRST events throughout the state, including field recess, queuing, FTA, and broadcasting our matches for public viewing. In addition to our outreach, we are also involved in our community. Some of these in include Feeding the Needy, where we package over 1,500 boxes for the less fortunate so they could have a warm meal for Christmas Day and Positivity Matters. This collection drive allowed for pet items to be donated, collected, and brought to the St. Tim Humane Society. The FTC team, Robo Knights, from New York invited us to be the Louisiana sponsor for us October. Of course, we helped out and gathered socks to be donated to the local Samaritan Center. Running a team as active as ours requires funding. We hold several fundraisers, including selling concessions at our school's home football games and selling temporary IDs bi-weekly at our school. We have hosted a Saints raffle in which prizes included Drew Brees signed jersey and several mini helmets autographed by key players. We also have numerous sponsors. It is important that we maintain a good relationship with them, including keeping them updated with our progress. We've had a great FTC season so far, and I hope you have as well. Good luck on the field.